a major breakthrough in the war on diabetes. Canadian scientists have succeeded in giving test patients cell transplants, a breakthrough treatment that could mean a better quality of life for millions. Definitely, I think Ray is a star of the university, and not only within the university, but internationally. He is recognized as one of the leaders in ILA transplantation. And in fact, I think that he's the, the one individual that is clearly responsible for the success here in Edmonton. Many of us, including ourselves, had been working on this for a long time, 30 years, and it hadn't worked that well. But there really hasn't been much since the discovery of insulin. So. I think uh, you know the world has been waiting somewhat, if you will, for a better treatment. We were a little surprised on you know the world reaction with uh, you know and how literally everybody around the world uh, you know thought that this was really a, truly a breakthrough. Everyone's very proud of what he's done and kind of it's almost surprise well not surprising but just for everyone thinks a small town small town kid that didn't have very good grades in high school and that that are kind of neat that he's been able to do what he's done. I was born in Wainwright, which is a small town about 120 miles uh, from Edmonton. Being brought up on the farm, really, I think it teaches you a lot of things, mainly that uh, you have to, you know, if things break, you have to just learn to fix them. And I think that's something that has carried over in, even in my research days. I think it was reasonably hard uh, work that, uh, you know, you had to, you still had to bale and work behind, you know, uh, pickups, uh, you know, these heavy bales during the summer, etc. So it was a fairly hard work. Uh, however, it, you know, it was very enjoyable and uh, uh, part of my life. Uh, one of my relatives was uh, an x-ray technician and I thought well that might be kind of an interesting uh, profession to get involved with and so I started the x-ray program. I then became the first graduating class in Nate uh, in, in x-ray technology. I was waiting for a patient uh, one day and uh, I opened a book uh, and I said biomedical engineers the future so I said well that might be kind of fun to become a biomedical engineer so I inquired at the University of Alberta and they told me why don't you come and talk to the head of electrical engineering. I did some research here in the basement and uh, my first lab actually as you'll see here was uh, right here and this was part of SMRI but my first lab actually this was a bathroom an old bathroom that uh, I did my research and I had set my uh, the, the lab bench over the urinals and this is where I did uh, actually my research back when I was uh, an engineer. He became very interested in the preservation of living tissue by freezing and without and duly disturbing their function and that's been his life's work ever since. And I remember well the first time we, we tried to thaw the kidney we had frozen it down to very low temperatures and we had uh, and you turn on the power of these old microwaves and the lights would go down it was really uh, draw so much power. We, on a theoretical basis we thought the kidney would take you know several minutes or to thaw and within 30 seconds the kidney blew up and you opened the microwave and there was kidney all over and it smelled etc. But it's quite unusual to get somebody who works on a, on a basic science project and then translates it into a uh, successful clinical project. That isn't, there are not too many people like that. Yeah. And it's something that he's been striving for since 1973, more or less. He's always had this, this goal. I was completely inspired by the type of work he was doing, but not only the type of work he was doing, but the type of individual that he, that he is and how he was able to uh, enjoy his work so much. And I saw that and I thought, well, this is really great that you, you see an individual who loves his work and does such a good job at it. I don't see him that often. Like he's usually upstairs and busy and running around. And so uh, I see him once in a while. It's kind of nice to be able to go in his office, ask for some money. And <laughs> Come back down. Yeah, it, there's no question it is a passion for me. I mean, you know, it has to be. And, you know, when, and as, as you go on, I mean, 
you can't leave your, you know, you, you, it's not an eight to four job. I mean, you know, you might go home eight to four, whatever it is, but you know, you're continuously thinking. I mean, it's literally seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You sit there, you know, you, can be, you can't go to sleep or you wake up at night and you're thinking, oh, gee, this is the problem or that's the solution. So really, it becomes a, a way of life. And I think, you know, you can talk to other, uh, you know, people in the group that this becomes truly a way of life for you. I don't have to worry about taking insulin, I don't have to worry about testing my blood, I don't have to worry about when or how much I eat, or whether I eat at all. Um, those are all things that uh, seem simple by themselves, but uh, the management of diabetes is juggling all of those issues every day of your life. Uh, I think he's totally honest, and works hard, thinks hard, reads hard, still has the same old sense of humor, in spite of is renowned.